Good afternoon. Today I'm borrowing something from Trinity and C. I'm not going to use the Hall of Notes, but I like the way they did it, their imagination, and this was a clever idea. And I've never, I've always thought about doing this, but never could figure out what kind of format I wanted to use. And I can't do it without at least pouring a little bit of whiskey. So, use the old bull Balblero 2 for this. This is all my single malts, sort of loosely organized by region. So if I get one out of whack, it is what it is. <clears throat> uh, won't be no Hall of Notes music on this one. Mm. And let's get this monkey started. <clears throat> That's good. Isla, Dark Cove, committee release. Hard bag 10 in the 10. That's a replacement bottle. Hard bag perpetuum. A log of woolen 16. Port Charlotte, the Peat Project. Lefroy 10. Freud 10 cast strength, 006. It's my third bottle of cast strength I've bought over the last couple of years, at least. Kalila 12. Kalila Stitchel Reserve. Generally, if they're in the box, they're unopened. There'll only be one exception to that. Kalila Distillers Edition. This was Distilled in 1997, bottled in 2010. Bowmore, 17. This one's kind of a special one. I got it for around, I think, uh, upper 50s, if I remember correctly, 58, $59. And uh, I walked out of the store, Googled it on my cell phone, and I walked back in the store and paid for it because I was unsure what it is. I guess it's a early to mid 90s bottling of the 17 and because the label anyway that was a pretty unique find <clears throat> longmore 17 keeps dragging on i hate to get rid of it probably the best non-age state of whiskey i've had springbank 10 glenfiddich teaser pack i've never had a 12 i'll be honest i've had this one 15, never had the 18. Jura, seen a review on that the other day. Uh, I can't remember if it's the guy from Scotch and Sniff did it. Uh, Sniff, I think it was. Anyway, it was a very good review. Made me go out and buy it. Still haven't opened it. Jura 10, late 90s, early 2000 bottling. Paid more for it than I really wanted to. This so is the Jura 21. This is a 2004 bottling. It was a it was a bottling for George Orwell's book, 1984. He wrote that on the Alma of Jura, I guess. And it's kind of a commemorative for it. Now we're leaving the islands in Campbelltown behind. We're now in the space side. Going to live at Nadura. That's a 2012 bottling. McAllen 12, the only McAllen I currently have. I got a free tasting at the store the other day. Well, the other day, a month ago. It's really good. Glenrothes 1998. Glenrothes 1995. It's getting harder to find places with an arm reach to put this stuff. Balvenie teaser pack. I've had all three of these before at one point or another. Uh, $15.99. I couldn't pass it up. I like Balvenie. How many 15 single barrel bourbon? Above any 12 signature triple cask. Above any 17 peated cask. Altmore 12. I've had this for a long time and I've just never opened it. I don't know why. Abulara Abuna 46 batch. Glen Farkless 105. 
Franklin Grant 10. Good, simple, straightforward scotch. I really kind of like it. Longmorn 15. Can't get it no more. Found it for $51, I think it was what I paid for it on a bottom shelf in a small liquor store. Then Rock 10, Curiositas. <laughs> a little more <Maury> taster. <laughs> I paid sub $25. I don't remember if it was 23, 21, 99, 22. I don't remember if it was sub $25. Couldn't pass that up with two glasses. I mean, couldn't do it. Glenmore 16 again. 10. I couldn't pass it up because of the 10. That's just a beautiful 10 package. Again, all this, if it's generally in a cardboard box, it's unopened. Ardmore, traditional cask. And don't think unopened because um, I'm uh, some sort of collector. I just, I'm by myself for the most part, and I can't drink and stay ahead of what I buy. I mean, if I did, my liver would just give up the ghost. <laughs> and we don't want that to happen. Balblero 2, which you got in the glass, which, very tasty stuff. Lamorne Jalanta. Just bought it the other day. Another find in a shelf. Glamorgi Taster Pack. I've had the Glamorgi 10. These other three, the La Santa, the Quinta Ruben, and the uh, Nectar Dior, I've never had. And my dusty bottle of 18 Glamorgi, which I need to open. I'm really looking forward to it, believe it or not. Old Pulteney 12. We're in the Highlands now. I mean, we've probably been in the Highlands for a little bit, but I'm just now, my mind's catching up. Second bottle of this. I like this stuff. I can get it for around $51. I can order it at my liquor store. She always seems to be able to get it when she wants it. She told me she'll be able to get it anytime I want it. They just don't sell enough, at, so they keep plenty on hand. Tomato 12, that was just a good damn buy. That was like, I forget what I paid for it. It was cheap. I bought Bard a bottle too. I mean, it was dirt cheap. I mean, dirt cheap. It's like a mismark price. I don't remember what it was, 23, 21. I don't know. It was cheap. Then the, then the Coup de Gras, Deanston 30, which has been opened. This is the one that has been opened. That's all my single malt scotches, so bear with me. I'll shut this down and I'll get us some more stuff lined up and we'll go through that. And we continue on. So now I've gotten those put back up. I've got a whole new set of stuff out here. We've got blended scotches, a couple of Irishes, a cognac, four Canadians, a Japanese, a couple of gins and Rum and uh, crazy whiskey. We'll get to the crazy whiskey in a bit. Again, I can't do this without it. So I'm going to take one of my favorites out of this little pack and pour it. One of my favorites is the Old Dewar's 12. And this is the older one. This isn't what you get now. I haven't had the new one, but I don't think it gets as good of reviews. But I can still get this. Oh, that was rude. <laughs> here and there around here. So... Without further ado, ah, let's enjoy what we're going to do here. I just had a ham sandwich for lunch. All right, Dewar's White Label, Cuddy Sark. Clan McGregor. These are all blended scotches, by the way. On the less expensive side, especially the J.W. Dant. J.W. Dant also has a, they're an, they also have a bourbon, believe it or not. Inverhouse. 
Green Plaid, very rare Scotch whiskey. And it's very rare for a reason. That's a plastic bottle. I'm not even going to go into it. That's as much as I've got of the red label down. I don't drink very much of it very often. I actually do like the j and B. It actually, I, out of all that, this is what I would choose so far. I am going to try to do some sort of weird shootout with all these blends. I'm not sure how I'm going to work it yet. I've tried two or three different times to make time with my wife to do some sort of selection process that would work. It's all still in the works. Here's a rare one. This is a Grant. That Kansas tax stamp puts it in the 1982 realm ish. A guy contacted. Very old bottle. I found it on a shelf with the tax stamp still in western Kansas, far western Kansas, in a little town. I couldn't believe it. It's a very, very special old bottle. Probably will never be opened by me. I'm not going to talk much about these. Scoresby. Hunting Lodge. Overpaid for it. Passport. Because I don't know, some of these teachers is available everywhere. But some of these blends that I've shown you guys are not available everywhere. And I'm not going to, there's other blends that are cheap that are available in my area. But you can only buy them in the one liters and the 175s, like Clooney. And you can't buy them in the little bottles. And I just don't want that investment. I just, it's not worth it to me. They're not, they're just not worth it. White Mackay literally just did a review on it. A la Mist, haven't opened it yet. It came in a tube. I put the tube up, but uh, it's actually got an age statement, eight year old. <sighs> Compass Lock Box Lost Blend, needs no introduction. Blue Hanger, 10th limited release. I am going to do a review on that coming up. We'll leave it at that. That's a Berry Brothers and Rudd product. Doer Scratch Cask. Actually, not too bad stuff. And, I haven't even opened it yet. Banknote, Peated Reserve. That's mostly with exception to the Isle of Mist, they don't have age statements. Well, oh well, here's one more without an age statement. The Smoky Grouse, Famous Grouse Smoky Black. And I've had a little bit of it, but uh, it's different. We'll leave it at that for now. Then for Chevis 12, I've had a full bottle and a 375 both in the past, which I'm not investing in. So I just bought this for a little 12 because I want to do a 12 shootout with this. The Buchanan's 12 and the Dewar's 12. Which sounds good. Mm. Which is good. All right. That pretty much leaves the all the scotches behind. I think I'm done with them. The only cognac I have right now, Corvassier 12, uh, Connoisseur Collection. Not too bad of stuff. Not too bad of stuff. Sexton, Irish Whiskey. I've actually drank, you can't tell, but I've actually drank quite a bit of this. It's not bad. It's actually a, not a bad whiskey. And I haven't opened it yet. Jameson IPA, this is a good way to try it, see if I like it enough to buy the big 750. Now we're leaving into the Canadians. Port Classic, I've had it for a while, they got a new 12 out, I've seen, so I need to really probably look into opening that one. It's Canadian Club, Classic 12. Seagram's VO Gold. Forty Creek Confederation Oak and the Forty Creek 
Copper Pot Reserve, which I've had a little bit out. It's got a very unique flavor. We'll leave it at that for now. The only Japanese whiskey I bought, have. I bought it on a whim. Don't know why, they had it on sale. I've never had a Japanese whiskey. I'll be honest. I don't know why I bought it. Compulsion. Got two gins because I actually do like, in the summertime, I like a gin and tonic. The summertime. This is a Colorado gin, this is a Woody Creek Reserve, and this is the Seagram's gin. And I like this Seagram's gin. A lot of people don't, but I like it because it is actually 47% alcohol by volume or 94 proof. A lot of people don't think it tastes as well. This is the same thing, 47% alcohol by volume. I like gin kind of in that realm. I do have to admit, I really like the... Uh, from India one of those gins that they have over there they, the name escapes me uh, but anyway I like it but I'm out of it I drank the last of it and wanted to try something different so I got that a couple of rums plantation five year and that one I bought <laughs> this one was actually bought at a liquor store in Kansas and you're not supposed to be able to buy it at a liquor store in Kansas. So where they got it, I don't know. The cork tore up when I took it out of there. It was dry rotted, but it was still sealing. So I had to fish it out, drain it and put another cork in. I don't know enough about rums. They're both open to tell you whether they're good or bad. I just, they're rum to me. And then the weird one. Bought it because it was $13.99 and it said Mekong on it. The spirit of Thailand imported, distilled and blended and bottled. And I'm going to try to say it, distillery product of Thailand. And uh, I don't know anything about it. It's like 35% ABV. I think you're really supposed to make mixed drinks with it. I don't know. Another one of them crazy purchases. I bought it probably because this looked really cute. <laughs> All right, takes care of that. We will stop it there and we will go on here in a minute. With another this one. will be quick. Tequilas. And I do like a tequila sunrise. I mean, I like a margarita, but I really like tequila sunrises. I have Corzon Re Reposado, and I prefer the Reposados. Anejos are good. Silvers are rough, but the Reposados is kind of an in-between in a lot of times. Not all Reposados are the same. And I like tequila. But the Reposado to me has always been my favorite tequila for sipping on. So I got the Corazon Reposado. That's only, oh. And I got the Cazadores. And Cazadores is very good stuff. I like Cazadores tequila. Uh, I have a 100 años, it's by Suaza. It's a Añejo tequila. I have a El Jimador silver tequila. That's what I make margaritas out of. I have Ajayeto. I call it No Bueno por Caca. It's shit. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that word. It's not good. I don't even know why I bought it. I was in a bout of stupidity at the moment. <sighs> Do your own thing with that if you see that. And then I've got three Mezcals, two decent ones, the Fandango and the Vita, which I haven't opened yet, which are basic Mezcals. Then I got the cheap, cheap, cheap with the flipping ass little worm in it. Again, this was on sale at a little liquor store for next to nothing, and I just couldn't walk out without it. Now, I don't know why I bought it. I bought it because of the stupid worm. Everybody that I know have ever tried it says it's pretty much like drinking motor oil or something of that nature. I don't know, but I got it. 
That covers all the tequilas in the mezcals. And I almost forgot these two because they were sitting on the shelf. Just tore this one. Stupid thing. Caught on the dang edge of the shelf. Uh, a Reposado and a, and a Blanco, a silver tequila. Uh, both gift packs. I bought them because they were unique. I don't I've never even opened them. <laughs> anyway. But they look good on the shelf. <laughs> All right. I didn't realize I had this much bourbon. When you clean out the closet, it becomes abundantly clear. And you have a hell of a lot more than you think you have. This is just a bourbon. I'm not going to talk about the rise or the Tennessees or that. I'll put them on next. Let's get through this first. Let's start because it's going to take a bit. All right. We'll start over here. Old Charter 10-year-old. Can't buy this no more. Can't see it. I found two bottles of this. I bought one because they wanted kind of a high price. I think it was 10 bucks for this little 200 mil, so I only bought the one. I will be going out there later this week to where I bought this. If they still have the other, I will purchase it. So, got the old Charter 10-year-old. The old Charter 8-year-old. The old Charter 101. The Charter 101. That completes the Charter series. Evan Williams. Black. Green label's long gone. Evan Williams bottled and bond. I've already done a complete line of Evan Williams. Evan Williams 1783. Evan Williams single barrel. Old Crow stands by itself. Don't have nothing else quite like it. Ezra Brooks never even opened it yet. 90 proof. Then old Ezra seven years. Well, our special reserve. I had the bigger 375 of this, drank it, bought this because I want this for the when I do reviews and comparisons. Weller Antique 107. Weller 12. It's good. I don't quite sure it deserves all the hype or all the price hikes we've seen late, recently. I can still get mine occasionally. I find them for $35, but not very often. In fact, the last. Weller 12 I bought for Bart. Just Magnus Cigar Blend. Larceny. 1792. Calumet Farm. Bullet Bourbon. Look at the price. $16.49 for $7.50. Might tell you how long I've had it unopened. Four Roses. The only Four Roses product I actually have. Oh, and Maker's Mark. You know what? Here's to you, Scott. It's good stuff. Eighteen forty-three. Fighting Cock 103. Don't ask. One of those weird ones I bought just to buy. Clyde Mays. Wathen Single Barrel. Eagle Rare 10. Still with the 10-year age statement up top. Montgomery County. Wooden Hat. Bourbon Whiskey. Union Horse Distilling Reserve, bourbon, straight bourbon whiskey. Blended bourbon. Old Scout 7. Kentucky Vintage. Wild Turkey 101. Russell's Reserve. Get my legs centered a little bit better. Elijah Craig 12, back age stated. Elijah Craig 12, back age stated. Elijah Craig 12, back age stated. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. That's the B517 version. Oh, Granddad Bonded. JW Dent. 
bottled in bond Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Remember they had a scotch too? It's blended scotch. McKenna, Henry McKenna, 12 years bottled in bond. High West. Why I bought this one or the rye for me for Christmas, I don't remember which. But the High West American Prairie Bourbon. Jim Beam White Label. Don't let the label fool you. I've decanted because I can't stand plastic bottles. Jim Beam Distiller's Cut. That is a gem. That is a gem. Jim Beam Bonded, which I'm going to compare to the Distiller's Cut. Jim Beam Devil's Cut. Swami's favorite. Jim Beam Black Eight Years. I already drank the other opened one I had and the extra aged. <laughs> So I'm left with the two double-aged eight-year stated, the little bottle and the big bottle. Knob Creek 100 proof standard, Knob Creek. Knob Creek single barrel. Another Knob Creek single barrel. And those are both store picks. Booker's, this is a 201601. Another Booker's, one of my favorite buys of all. It's a 2014.05. I got it for 38 bucks a year and a half ago, maybe two. It was an eight year buck bourbon. It's made in California, if I remember right. Don't know why I bought it. It looked interesting. We'll give it a spin and see. And to finish off the bourbons, a fan sent me money. His name shall be. He didn't really want any notifications, so we'll just call him TC. Uh, he really enjoys watching my uh, videos, and he asked if he could buy me a bottle. And I said, you pick the bottle. He wanted scissor tail whiskey, but I can't get that locally, and I couldn't even find it across the border in Oklahoma. So we settled for lead slingers, because he's from Oklahoma. So I thought, follow suit and do that. So thank you, TC. This will be my next review. Well, I got one more in the queue. These, then one more in the queue, and then that's going to be the next one that goes up. All right, that was my All right. The last of the makers marked to power me through. It ought to do the trick. Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. How shall we do this? We'll start with the Tennessees first. Jack Daniels. I don't ever buy nothing but the little ones anymore. I got no use for the big ones. Jack Daniels, Gentleman Jack. Jack Daniels, number three. Jack Daniels, number four. Jack Daniels 2014. I think it's the 20, yes, the 20 limited edition 2014 holiday select barrel. I don't think they do those anymore. And Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel proof. This is 132 proof or 66% alcohol by volume. <coughs> Whoa, Maker's Mark's talking to me. That's the Jack Daniels line. This is my preferred line of Tennessee, believe it or not. I do not care too much for the old George Dickel number eight. It can be drank, but it's just not my thing. But the number 12, much different story. This is, it could be, if I was so inclined, I could drink this every damn day. Excuse my French. <clears throat> I also have George Dickel Barrel Select. That's 43% alcohol by volume. Then I have George Dickel, and this is hand selected barrel, age nine years, 51.5%. It's a Groves liquor thing when they still had them there. Special edition. 
bonded in, bottled and bond, mellow corn, straight corn whiskey. $9 plus tax. It was eight ninety nine dollars is what she quoted me. Nine dollars. Not eight ninety nine, nine bucks. And she had tax to it. I don't know. Haven't had it yet. I'm gonna start sweating a little bit. The old Rittenhouse bottled and bond label. New Rittenhouse bottled and bond label. These are the rise. I'm in the rise now. High rest, double rye. Got this is the Christmas bottle my wife bought for me. Russell's Reserve, six year straight rye whiskey, 45% alcohol by volume. Wild Turkey 101, straight rye whiskey. That's all the ryes I got for right now. Now we'll go into the American malts. This ain't been opened yet. And this is a WOA02 bottled January 15, 2008 McCarthy's. And the label is a little faded on it, so I don't know. I'll be interested to see what it tastes like if it tastes the same as Barton M's. There's all, it, all their stuff is much newer. Excuse me. Oregon Single Malt Whiskey. I reviewed this one. This tastes like beer. It has a very distinct beer taste. This is watermelon in a bottle. Malty watermelon in a bottle. St. George single malt whiskey. I reviewed that one too. And then last but not least, we have the Westland. Oh, it's this American oak peated. It's, it's their teaser pack for lack of a better word. I think these are 200 mil bottles. Hell, I don't know. I don't know without pulling it apart, so it don't matter right now. Anyway, it gives me an example of what's going to taste like to taste any one of those three. This is all I'm doing. We've reached the end of this. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's going to be a long one. There ain't no other way around it. Remember, the spirit in your glass is not running from you. Take your time, sip it, enjoy it. And do not kill your maker's mark like I just did because you're going to burp. And it's not pleasant. Well, actually it is, but not. Anyway, <laughs> enough said. Everybody have a good day.